What a horrible way to die. Hello, my name is Dr. Anton Jessup, and I'm curator of monster studies here at the university. You always find me down here in the university basement because of late I've taken something of a, an unofficial residency. Shh. But back to these marvelous creatures. You may find it a bit grotesque, but I simply cannot look away. These winged devourers haunt strange woods. They worship the eagle, and they boast one of the more ingenious feeding methods ever witnessed. Let's take a closer look. Tall, gaunt, bipedal, winged, the monsters depicted in the Beastmaster are unique anatomical specimens, even among other unnatural creatures. For starters, their large bat-like wings grant them at least limited flight, an impressive feat for such a large organism. But their wings have another purpose, to capture and hold human prey. Once the victim is secured, the devourer vomits a corrosive solvent all over the squirming meal's head. It's a form of external digestion, which you've also seen in spiders, the common housefly, or the extremely rare brundlefly. You break down food in the acidic pit of your stomach, while these creatures perform the same process outside of the body. Once regurgitated, the deadly vomit sinks in for a few moments, liquefying flesh right off the unfortunate victim's bones. Then our devourer sucks the grotesque soup right back into its gullet for a tasty meal. Finally, the creature simply throws open its wings and lets the indigestible remnants of bone and armor crumple to the ground. Such a beautiful organism. It lacks the necessary jaws for masticating flesh, and therefore it has to liquefy its meals for easy consumption. Now, no natural world vertebrate eats quite like this, but luckily for us, there's still plenty of regurgitation to go around. Bats and birds both vomit to feed their young. The proboscis monkey regurgitates and rechews its food. Vultures, meanwhile, use it as a defensive measure, and in this we find some fascinating answers. Some scientists theorize the vulture's defensive vomit is meant to intimidate would-be predators or even burn them with stomach acid. Still, others think that they choose such moments to lighten the load for emergency takeoff. However, the more tantalizing theory sees the regurgitated heap of partially digested carrion as a bribe. Why eat me, the vulture asks, when you can have all of this? But the turkey vulture's vomit is still highly acidic, powerful enough to break down rancid corpse flesh and the toxic bacteria therein. This may provide the strongest clue to the winged devourer's evolutionary past. Once scavenging avians, they cruised for carrion and scoffed it down on sight. Then, over the course of their evolution, they developed a new way to utilize their powerful digestive juices. Their jaws atrophied, and they learned to employ a very human mode of external digestion, cooking. They simply boil those indigestible bones down into a delicious, slurpable stew. Now, you may find all of this a bit grotesque. But doesn't it make you wish that human vomit was more interesting? That we could use it offensively or defensively, say, on the train? I know I do. Sadly, I have to leave you now. But in the meantime, I hope that you'll let me know what other monsters you would like for me to dissect for you. I'll be waiting to hear from you. In transmission.